Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to a new series called Advanced Topics. So in this new series, we're going to be going over some more upper division topics, uh, maybe later undergrad or early graduate school topics uh, in computer engineering, and computer science. So to you know, kind of start things off, we'll be looking at a tutorial from LLVM.org, and it's about writing your first compiler pass within the LLVM uh, compiler infrastructure. So uh, for this example, as far as the, you know, the things that you'll need, you'll of course need to you know, go ahead and download something like LLVM uh, from source because we're going to be making modifications to the source, uh, right? And you need to go ahead and build that. Uh, and then you'll also need uh, you know, say some front end to go ahead and spit out the LLVM uh, intermediate representation or the LLVM bit code. And so you know, for this example, I'll be using Clang 8. Um, but you know whatever you know works best for you for a front end for generating that representation. Um, so as far as building LLVM, it's pretty simple. All I did was clone the repository, uh, make a directory called build, and then I just went to the build directory and did cmake dot dot slash right. And this basically uh, will generate the make files you need to build your project. And then you can do something like cmake dash dash build dot right. Um, in order to build all of LLVM. There's more compiler options to set, you know, which parts of LLVM you care about, whether or not, uh, you know, you, don't, you want to, you know, build all of LLVM, if you want to install LLVM, um, etc. So, you know, on the LLVM website, there's plenty of documents as, as far as, you know, how to get started with building from source. So that won't be in this video, especially because it takes, uh, it can take quite a bit of time to do. So we'll go ahead and just assume that you've got uh, LLVM already built, right? So. Uh, and we'll be rebuilding LLVM, at least parts of LLVM, as we add our first compiler pass. And I'll have you know all of these things listed as far as the mirror and this tutorial itself uh, below the video. So let's go ahead and get started, right? Then we'll go through this tutorial. Um, so, you know, first of all, what is this pass, right? So these passes are one of the more interesting parts about the compiler, right? So these are the things to do the transformations and optimizations to our code. So if we want to you know have a pass that does some kind of vectorization or a pass that maybe does some instrumentation or maybe another pass that you know does function inlining or something these can all be implemented within the LLVM infrastructure so you know all of these passes though they inherit from this pass class right so we've got a great you know place to get started here and depending on what our pass does we'll inherit from different classes so uh, in this example we'll inherit from function pass but if we had something that you know fits more with loops um, we might be using something like loop pass, or you know, if we did something else, maybe this call graph SCC pass. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just get started with writing our own hello world pass. Now this is already, uh, this comes with the LLVM source, so we'll be basically creating a new example um, for this you know, hello module, or this uh, hello world compiler pass with a different name. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we need to do is we need to modify the cmakelists.txt file uh, files, right? And so this is basically what uh, LLVM will use in order to build all the shared libraries um, and all the uh, things like executables that you know uh, come with LLVM. So to get started, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go to where these are actually found. So let's get out of build uh, and let's go to um, lib and then transforms, right? So that's where we're going to put our um, our compiler pass. So inside of here, we can go ahead and make a directory and we can call it something like our pass, right? So this is where our compiler pass is going to be located. Now, in order to make sure that CMake will go into this directory, right, and treat it as a dependency, we'll need to modify cmakelists.txt within the uh, transforms directory. And all we need to do in here is add the subdirectory um, for our compiler pass. So in this case, you know, we'll add our pass to the different uh, dependencies here, right? So that just makes sure that, you know, whenever CMake goes through and starts generating make files, it says, hey, go ahead and look in this directory, our pass. So uh, now that we've got that settled, let's go into our directory. It's empty. We just made it. And we'll need to copy and paste this code, right? This basically just says, you know, what are my source files going to be? I'm going to be loading this. Uh, this is going to generate a shared library. It's going to be called, you know, lib LLVM hello or whatever we call it, uh, .so, and it's going to be loaded by opt. So what is opt? That's a good thing to get out of the way. So opt is the modular LLVM optimizer and analyzer. So basically, we're making a shared library for a compiler pass that will be loaded in uh, into opt. So uh, let's go ahead and make a c make lists.txt file in this directory. And then inside of here, we just need to do the add LLVM library. So this is going to be make a shared library, uh, library. 
and then uh, we'll call it something like LLVM and then let's call it our pass and then we'll make it will pass in module and then from here we'll set the source file now we can just call the source file something like our pass.cvp right and then down here we'll do plugin tool and then opt right and that's all we need to do for uh, as far as setting up uh, our build right so from now on we just need to focus on actually writing the source for our uh, um, writing the source for our compiler pass right so we can get started right and we named our pass um, if we go ahead and just cat cmake list we called it our pass so let's make a file called our pass.cpp we can say that this file implements a hello world compiler pass right and it's by Nick from coffee before arch all right so now we can go ahead and get started with the rest of our examples we'll need some things to start out with so we'll go ahead and include this LVM pass.h right the interface for uh, this pass class that we're going to be uh, inheriting from uh, so let's go ahead and include uh, LVM comma or slash pass uh, uppercase pass dot H right? and then we'll also include this LL uh, LVM slash IR standing for intermediate representation and then uh, function dot H right? so this is going to be where that class function is that we're going to be inheriting from um, or basically what we're going or you know what we're going to be using as far as uh, you know, we're going to be working with functions in this class um, or in this compiler pass, right? So this is, uh, we're going to be basically making a function pass here. And then finally, we're going to um, include this uh, raw O stream thing. And I believe this is what we're going to be using for uh, printing some things out within our compiler pass. So LVM slash support slash raw O stream dot H, right? And then we can go ahead and get started by using namespace uh, Let's see, namespace LVM, right? So that's where all everything is going to be prepended with this LVM colon colon. So just to avoid that, we can go ahead and just use using namespace LVM. Um, okay, so uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have this anonymous namespace here. It's just to make sure that we're not going to conflict with anything in the outer namespace. So we'll just to get anonymous namespace, we'll just do namespace and then some brackets. So then inside of here, we're going to make a struct, right? And so this is going to be uh, our actual pass, right? So, you know, in here, we're going to be, um, you know, our pass is going to be called something different. Instead of calling it hello, let's call it our pass. So we'll create a struct called our pass that will inherit from function pass, right? So function pass is kind of this generic function pass. Um, and we're going to be basically overriding some of the virtual methods within that class, right? So now you know in this case our pass is a subclass of function pass um, and we'll go ahead and add some things here so we'll add the static care uh, static char id and then this uh you know this thing this hello uh, basically the constructor um right here so let's go ahead and you know first do static char id right and then let's we'll initialize it later on and then let's also have our constructor right function pass ID so we'll pass an ID to it and it'll just be blank it won't do anything so uh, so this is going to declare a pass identifier so this is how LVM is going to distinguish between different passes um, basically you know according to the docs right allows LVM to avoid using expensive C++ runtime information all right so the next thing we need to do is actually specify what this pass does so we overload this function or override this function this run on function so basically what happens when we find a function so in order to do that, let's go ahead and go ahead and just do bool run on function, right? And this will take a function, right? Which is just a um, some class that uh, comes with uh, LVM, right? The representation of a function, right? And we'll put override there. And then what are we actually going to do whenever we find a function? Oops, and we should rename this from hello to our pass uh, because we've, we've called this class our pass, not hello. All right, so on every any function, right, we're going to use this errors 
um, to go. It's kind of like see out as far as the stream object goes. So we can go ahead and print out something like, um, you know, we've got our pass here. So we'll print that instead of hello. And then we'll go ahead and get the name of the function. So we'll do errors, write, escaped, and then f.get name. So function right here has a method for getting the name of the function. So we'll call that. And then we'll also print out a uh, we'll print out a new line character as well. Um, that way it goes to the next line. And then uh, after that, you know, we'll go ahead and return false from here. Oops. And I believe we return false if we ever uh, if we return without modifying, say, the original code, or true if we have modified the original code. So you know, we've declared this run on function method, which overrides the abstract virtual method inherited from function pass. So we're basically just giving an implementation for function pass. Um, so uh, all we're doing is basically printing out um, the name of each function here. All right, so then outside of all of this, we can go ahead and initialize our ID, right? So we'll initialize our pass ID. And so this is what LVM use, uh, uses IDs to address uh, uh, uses IDs address to identify a pass, so the actual initialization value is not important. But we'll go ahead and do that outside of all this, so we'll do char, um, in this case it's our class, right? scope resolution operator ID, and we'll just set it equal to zero as well. And then we also actually need to register our class, so that's kind of the last thing we need to do. So you know, basically giving it a command line argument. So in this case, we say, you know, what are we going to use in order to call this pass? So here they're using hello, but we'll use something like our pass. And then basically, you know, what gets printed out as far as, you know, uh, like a description of this pass. So this just says hello world pass. So we can do something like that. And the last two arguments describe the behavior. So if a, if a pass walks a CFG without modifying it, then the third argument is set to true, right? Um, if a pass is analysis pass, for example, a dominator tree pass and true is supplied as a fourth argument. So we can just pass both of these at false or as false. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and do um, static, register, let's register the pass and then it'll be our pass, right? So um, the template um, parameter right here is our pass, right? Instead of hello. Uh, just because we named our our class or struct our pass and then x and then what do we want this to be called from the command line we can call it our pass and then we can also say you know a simple you know hello world pass and then from here again both of these are these next arguments are going to be false and then we'll add a semicolon at the end All right and then we can go ahead and do a uh, clang format there all right so uh, let's see. Oops, we called it our class here instead of our pass. Let's go ahead and go back and fix that. There we go. That should fix that uh, that warning. There we go. All right. So now that we've got all of this set up, the last thing we can do is this last part here. So if we want to register the pass as the step of an existing pipeline, there's some ex extension points. So like if we wanted to do this pass before any optimization, we could do this pass manager builder at uh, ep underscore early as possible. Or if we want to do it at the end, right, we can say, you know, EP full link time optimization last to apply it after link time optimizations, right? So we can go ahead and add this as well. So uh, to save everyone from me having to, you know, basically just copy this text, you know, we can go ahead and just paste this in here uh, and then run Clang format on it. The only thing we need to change here is instead of doing new hello here, we'll do our pass instead, right? So uh, you may see a number of errors here, and that's because what it hasn't shown here is that there's some additional headers we need to include. So if we go back up here to the very top, all we need to include now is the thing for this pass manager. So we need to just uh, go ahead and include, you know, for this example, uh, LVM slash IR slash legacy pass manager dot H. And we also need to include LVM slash transforms uh, slash IPO slash pass manager builder dot H, right? And those are the only things that we need to include here. So now all those warnings are gone. We can call clang format on this. So let's kind of clean things up by, you know, zooming out a bit, right? So here, you know, we can say, uh, right? So we go ahead. It's always a good idea to kind of annotate whenever you've got a bunch of curly braces ending all in a row. So we can say end of our 
pass, and here we can say end of namespace, right? So now that's all we need for our basic compiler pass. So let's kind of run through everything. So we have our compiler pass that inherits from function pass. And then over here, we're, uh, we're overwriting this run on function uh, coming from function pass. And what we're doing in here is we're just printing out our pass and the name of the function anytime we see a function. Then uh, we're registering our pass um, using this register pass and register standard passes. And the next thing we need to do is actually build it. Right, so now we can go ahead and go back, and we can go back to um, inside of uh, inside of our root directory. We can go back to build, and then we can do you know cmake dot dot slash. Right, so this is like what you do, in, you know, at the very beginning, whenever you're uh, you know whenever you're first building cmake, um, you'll go through this step, and then the next part you'll go through is also this cmake um, dash dash build dot right. So when you do that, you'll see that it's not actually having to build any of these because they're already built, because I've already compiled this. But it will go ahead and find, you know, hey, it found that there's a new dependency, LVMR pass. So that's a compiler pass that we created. So we'll go ahead and try to build LVMR pass.so. So then it goes through the rest of everything. And hey, look, completed without any errors, right? So we've built our pass. Now, to load our pass, we'll go ahead and use opt, right? And you can find that within, you know, bin, right? Within this directory inside of our build directory. So uh, uh, the next thing we need to do, though, is, you know, we've got a compiler pass now, but what do we actually do with it, right? We've got, we have to have some code to run this compiler pass on, right? So running it with opt. Ooh, let's go back. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, you know, write a quick program so we can write hello world and see. So we'll call this program just hello.c, and very simple, we'll just include stdio.h. We'll have a main function, right? So we'll just have one function here, so we should just see one print from our compiler pass. We'll just do printf, you know, hello world uh, with a new line character, and then return zero, right? And that'll be our simple program. Now. You know what we need to load into opt is the LVM um, or is the LVM like IR um, or the LVM bit code, right? In order to do that, right, we need to generate this bit code file, right? Something like hello.bc. So to do that, I'll be using clang um, or clang-8 as a front end, and I'll just pass in the parameter, you know, emit LVM, right? That's all I need to do there, and then dash c, and then I'll pass in hello.c. And that's all I need to do. So now I'll have this hello.bc here. I could specify an output file name if I wanted to, but in this case, it just generates hello.bc. So now I can go ahead and load this in using opt, right? So, you know, first thing I can do is I can just do, um, let's go ahead and make this full screen. I can do something like, um, I'll use the one inside of LVM that we just built. So I'll do uh, bin opt, and then I'll do dash load. And then from lib, I'll load in LVM and then our pass.so. And I can also type in dash help here, right? And so we can see a whole bunch of different things here um, as far as, you know, the things that we can specify that we want to do as far as passes go. So, you know, let's go ahead and just kind of parse through this real quick. And I can say, you know, I can grep for something like um, our pass, right? And look, we we're able to find our pass, which is a simple hello world pass. Right? So that's the one that we made. So it's located within that SO file um, or within that shared library. So let's actually run it on uh, run it on a program uh, or on our bit code. Right. So in this case, you know, we'll, we'll load in LVM R pass. Into that, we'll pass in our uh, hello.bc, and then we'll go ahead and redirect you know the output to this to um, slash dev null, right? Um, and then you can see that uh, when we go ahead and do this, right? Um, let's see. Oh, we didn't specify uh, the pass that we want to do. So we'll have to load LVM. And then we'll also need to pass in uh, something like our pass, right? So we'll do something like this, right? So we need to specify the pass we want to do. So we'll load this library, specify our pass, pass in our bit code and then redirect the rest of the output to dev null, right? And that just is so, you know, it just goes someplace, goes to something that, you know, is gone forever uh, because we don't care about that output. So, oh, 
sorry, not hello world.bc, that was from an uh, earlier test. It's just hello.bc, and you see that it prints out our pass in main, exactly what we have in our compiler pass. If we can go back into hello.c if we want to make this, you know, maybe a little bit fancier. So we can have a void function called, you know, print func. It doesn't take anything, but maybe it just calls hello world for us, right? That way we have more than one function here. And then from main, we can call, you know, print func. That's all we need to do here. We'll just rerun uh, Clang to emit the LLVM, and then we can uh, go ahead and run our pass again. And now you see that it finds, you know, print func and main. And then we can also do, um, you know, we can also run uh, time uh, pass right here, or sorry, time passes, right? And, you know, once we get more complicated passes, it may take a significant amount of time. So it's not a bad idea to maybe measure how long they take, right? So if we're going to introduce overhead, overhead can be at compile time or runtime, right? So it might be something that you need to measure. So now you can see that, you know, how long the bitcode writer took, the module verifier uh, fire took, and then even our simple hello world pass, how long did that take, right? So you know, you can get some statistics about your own compiler pass, right? So that's kind of a basic example of getting started with um, LVM, kind of writing your first um, your first compiler pass, right? So this one's pretty simple. All it really does is, you know, print out the names of functions as we see them. But there's a number of things you can do, and there's a number of different classes you can overload. So immutable pass, module pass, call graph, you know, SEC pass, depending on what you're doing inside of your program. And we may look at those in later videos. I'll also link a link to this, uh, leave a link to this uh, uh, Adrian Sampson's uh, blog. Uh, so this is a post from 2015 called LVM for Grad Students, and it has you know, more or less the same example in here, but it also has another one where it says, you know, replace all the binary operators with, say, multiplication, right? So it actually, uh, it does a little bit more and actually modifies our, uh, our code. So we may do that in a later video, or we'll just leave it as something that I'll link below this video. But um, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, um, if you're interested in any of the code that I have, it's available at github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got a number of series on GPU programming, CPU programming, and optimization. And so in this series and later videos, we'll do stuff like looking at you know, microarchitecture simulators and more advanced topics like that. But that's going to do it for today. Again, I'll leave all these links below the video. But I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.